Solana Cristeo beat Carolyn Garcia in Indian Wells. And the two players face off once again in part two of the Sunshine Double in Miami. She made the quarterfinals in Indian Wells for the first time, and she's been playing at that tournament since 2009. Garcia will be looking to turn the tables on the Romanian. Last year's winner at the WJ Finals is bidding for a third final this season. few more clouds in the sky, but uh, nothing too ominous. No issues with the rain are expected today, and also for quite a, quite a few days in Miami, which is obviously great for the players, not having to contend with any sort of rain delays, but also for the uh, fans. And it's one of these times in tennis where we have players meeting for the second time in as many tournaments. She was saying after the loss to Christa Amy Wells that uh, she was passing so well in that match, every time that she went forward, it, it seemed like Christea had the answers. Got a chance to get the victory today for Garcia. Hello, welcome ladies. A couple of reminders before we start. Softbox in the two corners just behind me. Power bin in each corner. Number one for you, please. And number two is for you, please. If you want to see any additional images of the live calling system, let me know and we'll bring them up on the board. Questions? Solana, your choice, we have heads or tails? Uh, tails, please. Tails it is? Tails. Set. So, Christina won the toss and elected to serve. This is the second round match in Miami. She's already had a match under her belt. Christina, not the case for. Garcia, a buy straight through to the second round. She is the number five seed and the world number four. Alexander Dilgari is alongside myself, Ravi Uba for this one. And Alex uh, Strata, somebody you know very well, of course, you hail from Romania, so I'm sure you have some great nuggets. But first, let me ask you, what's the dynamic like for players to meet in back-to-back in -back events? Is, is, it doesn't happen a lot. How do you think both players be feeling going into it? I was actually going to start with that. Yes, Serena is my compatriot. We've known each other since we were eight and nine. We, we started with an early rivalry and we had a, a beautiful one over the years. Um, yes, it is very weird to play back-to-back -back matches with someone you, you just you know played against, won or lost, to play again the next tournament or the next two tournaments. It's, it's, it's very weird. It's like, you know, you don't want to see the same face twice, <laughs> very soon. Mostly when when you've uh, had such a tight match yeah. against that one. Because if you win easily, then, yeah. you know, you're more comfortable going to that match. But when you know you had, like, a really, really hard match, a three-setter, going there again, facing those same emotions, that the, the same feelings, it's, it, it is a bit, um, a bit annoying. But the, the, the dynamic, the mental part of it is obviously so, so interesting. You know, you have Garcia probably wanting to go, okay, get an opportunity to try and get the win straight away for Garcia. Well, I said, I just beat her, I might have the, that confidence and also the mental edge. So we'll see how it all does play out. But just some numbers as we saw for Garcia this season, 17 and 7 overall. Mentioned those two finals that she has made. And then Leo, that was at home for her. It really was at home for her in France region where she is from in France, also in Monterey, quarterfinals in Canada, and also made the fourth round the Australian Open where she was beaten by Magda Lynette. And as for Christian, she made it two and five entering Indian Wells before turning it around Indian Wells and actually said after beating Garcia, she felt like she was playing good tennis, but the results hadn't really been there to show. She's been on the tour for a long time, 32 years of age. First time of the scene where she was known for being a very, very big hitter, pure ball striker. Yeah, I can talk a lot about Sorana, considering the fact that I've known her for so long. She'd always been like this since she was little. She wanted to slap that ball as hard as possible. You know, that was a game style. Usually that's a little bit untypical for Romanians because we like to, you know, to do much more with the ball. You know, like to, um, build up the point and have that kind of mental setup. But she was the one that tried to always be aggressive and, and be that alpha player on court. Um, 
So over the years, I think she said, um, you know, some ups and downs um, oh, okay. when it came to her game. I'm not talking only about injuries, because obviously she had a, like a shoulder injury that was a little bit um, unfortunate, but it's how she perceived the game. She always wanted to finish the point really quickly. And there are moments that will go against her. We'll talk more about throwing up the match for them, but yeah. interesting, you know, when she was coming through the ranks, how she was talked about because of the ability to hit the ball and the ball really going through the court. She, she has one of the cleaner shots. She has um, amazing power on, on, on both sides, mostly with her forehand. She ravages that, that forehand. Uh, she's always been known for that. I think the biggest plus in her game came when she started, you know, adding more patience and accepting that she needs to build up her point more. And there is the coach, Thomas Johansson, Grand Slam winner from Sweden. Also had to work with Ria Saka, who we saw earlier in the day, take on Bianca Andrescu. His game was huge serve, huge forehand, the baseliner. Well, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Given that they just played and it was won by Chris Davis. So heavily in the favor of Garcia, 70 30. 